In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this inline on demand hot water heater, which uses a hot plate, hydraulic solenoid for safety, or you could use a pressure valve. This turns on when I turn on the burner. I'll have these both sticking out of the countertop, and I'll use the faucet to control pressure, and I'll leave it on all the time, and the solenoid will actually allow water to flow through. And that's just because I didn't have a pressure valve laying around in case there was too much steam pressure built up. And I'll be adding a GFCI by simply tying the ground to my copper tube. And what's nice about that is it also, for safety, trips the solenoid to turn off the water flow. So in case a breaker trips or in case GFCI trips, it will stop the water. From the only other thing safety-wise that I would worry about is making sure that these open electronics actually are wrapped in some kind of manifold. I'll probably form some sheet metal for that. So stick around if you want to see how I built this and uh, some of the process I used to come to these conclusions. Depending on your rate of flow, this design will give you around 20 to 30 degrees of rise with a moderate flow output. Otherwise, if you're really blasting water through it, you won't get that much rise, maybe 10 degrees or something like that. And if you slow it way down, you'll get essentially boiling water coming out. So it's completely relative based upon how much water is being pushed through it. The main advantage is that it's not running all the time. So if you're using something like a sink in your garage, this might be a good option. Obviously, I take no responsibility. I do believe that this is fairly safe, but nonetheless, if you don't know what you're doing, it's easy to make a mistake and hurt yourself. And if something like this burns your house down, keep in mind, you made it, you modified a product, it's not UL listed, uh, insurance won't cover it. And obviously if you have a better idea, please comment. I would guess this system probably cost, including all fittings, probably between 30 and $50, somewhere in there. So for what it is, it's not, it's not that expensive. You can beat the price by getting something from China, but it will be wired for 220 volts and usually around 30 amps or something like that. This is designed to only use about 10 amps, which is a, a feature of it. Obviously it means you can't heat water as quickly, but it does mean that you can use your existing infrastructure. Links are in the description. Here I have a very simple heating control. So I can pump this all the way to the maximum or keep it down lower. This was $12. I think this was around $15. I also like this model because it had a light. So what I can do is I can pull that light all the way up through the countertop and I'll have a light to tell whether it's on or not. This is my initial setup here. This is gonna be my cold, this is gonna be my hot. I have this tied on here with some copper wire. So it's not even making excellent contact or anything. So I ran this through with just cold water. 11 degrees Celsius and 10% of that is 1.1. So 11 minus 1.1 call it roughly 10 times 2 is 20 plus 32 so we're at roughly about 52 degrees Fahrenheit that's a little mental math trick I came up with years ago let's find out if that's correct there you go boys and girls 51.8 degrees so yep about 52 degrees Fahrenheit so if you're trying to do mental math of Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion that works really well basically you take your number in Celsius you take 10% of that, which is extremely easy to do. And uh, then you subtract that from the number and then you multiply that result by two and add 32 and you get your rough Fahrenheit. Now let's find out uh, just how much we can get out of it using it as is. It's very apparent that I need much more coil around this, at least double, possibly more. The problem is the conduction. The conduction is just very poor we're getting warm water out of this side, but you'll see the flow is not great. We're at about 29 degrees, so we're up to about 84 degrees. Well, I had enough time to do one last test. I did a quick fiberglass wrap. I can still tell there's a lot of heat at the bottom, though, so I think unavoidably I'm going to have to take the unit apart and actually pull the coils out of it. So this design is really simple. There was just one uh, nut and screw holding this on. This is a bit more complicated though, it's not designed to be serviced. Uh, you can see right here, this is high temperature wire uh, wrapped with fiberglass. 
So that's how you know it's a high temperature wire. I don't remember offhand what, what type of uh, conductor they use in these applications. This was pretty much a one-way process. <laughs> no going back. On the bright side, this thing only cost like $12. So, yeah. But I was able to salvage everything from it. This uh, plastic base is very, very brittle. So it's probably a high temperature plastic, which is kind of cool. And here is my uh, finished result. So if I recall correctly, this, is, this unit is rated at 1100 watts. So I stuck a couple 6.2 amp fuses in here, which should give me around 12.4 amps. There we go, a little heat shrink and it looks perfectly tidy. All right, so I removed that metal bridge between here. I couldn't think of a good reason to keep it on and it made it easier. I uh, ended up using some nichrome here, around 22 gauge or something. So I, I just tied it together with that. I noticed that the copper wire before was changing shape a bit. So uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this uh, with some foil, probably four layers. And that's just because it's thin too if you have a thicker foil. And uh, then I'm going to fill it with some play sand. I put a pad of fiberglass over the conductor terminals for the heating coil. And uh, here I have my extended wires here. Again, optional. I just happen to have the uh, thermal wire laying around. We are at 35C, 36C, something like that. But I'm going to turn up the water because this is not a realistic flow. That's uh, closer to what I'd be using flow. If I was washing my hands or something. Around 21 degrees Celsius, or about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So that was about a 20 degree rise with a decent flow. And really not much thermal loss going on here, which is nice. Well, I am moderately satisfied with my 1100 watt inline water heater that just works on demand. You have to give it a couple minutes of warm up time and the flow has to be fairly low. So I wanted to compare it to uh, this, which is from a water cooler. It is a heating tank from a water cooler so you can get hot water out for tea and that sort of thing, which is cool. And I could easily use it for heating up my water. Um, it has a little bit more, I, I suspect what it's going to do is it's going to draw a small amount of amperage uh, for a long period of time. So the question is the return on investment in terms of how much you're getting back out of it, you know, based upon usage and that sort of thing. So I used my uh, kilowatt meter, and uh, sure enough, this draws roughly 400 watts. This is using roughly one third of the power that my other hot plate based water heater is using, but it's using it as long as it takes to heat up that amount of water, and then it's underpowered. And I can tell you it's underpowered because the uh, 1100 watt hot plate based one is underpowered. You wouldn't find something like that normally. You pretty much will always find about double that. So. It's uh, intentionally low, and uh, that's mostly because I just don't need a ton of hot water right away, and I can't afford to wait a couple minutes. So I think I will stick to the one I made out of the hot plate. I think my hot plate design is very primitive, underpowered, and uh, pretty perfect for my particular situation. So the idea is simply to run it slowly enough that the water will be at the temperature you desire. So it's very relative, it's very simple. And that's uh, the way some of the other models that I saw worked as well. I do have one safety concern, which is that it can potentially build up steam. 
it could pressurize the line, but there should still be a pressure relief. And I was thinking about it, and one thing I could do is drive a solenoid using the same heat controller. So basically, when it's off, the solenoid is closed, I turn it on, the solenoid opens. Alright, so I've insulated this stuff with some silicone, and this is set to high. Here's my hydraulic solenoid. This is all pipe clamped together using some old tubing I found, which should be good for at least 100 PSI. And when I turn it on, that turns on, and that turns on. Pretty neat, huh? And of course I can uh, adjust my flow down. So I'll get it down to just a trickle while this thing heats up. Yeah, so this is probably around 110, 115 degrees at this flow rate. And it's been probably a couple minutes. So our exchanger is getting heated up. The sand does offer some thermal mass, so it takes it a little bit longer probably, but it's also conductive. And there are better thermal catalysts than just some play sand, obviously. About the same temperature as my body. We're probably around 98, maybe 100 degrees. I turn that off. And what's going to happen is this has been running a few minutes, so a lot of that energy is still in here. And it should be heating up all of the water already in there. The water carries away that energy. And once you turn it off, it just kind of sits there built up. And uh, the water will continue getting hotter and hotter. Interestingly, this cold input is still cold. I wasn't expecting that. The output is very hot, and the uh, water coming off of here is also very hot. In fact, you see how it's just sort of trickling out here and there? That's actually steam energy pushing it out, because everything is turned off, and the water coming off is very hot. And that is exactly why you would need a pressure relief if I wasn't just leaving this wide open after use. Oh, it's making sort of a coffee pot sound. So the water is turning into steam is what that means. It means it's basically reaching boiling point. So if I was to let some water through now, yeah, you can see all of that steam coming out. It's going to let that fill the exchanger again. Yeah. So that's probably around 110, 120. So the system will basically just use this knob and this light will light up indicating when it's on. And then I'll leave the uh, faucet open on the hot. And so what I'll really do is I'll use the hot to adjust the pressure and the system will only have water coming out when it's on using the dial there, which will probably almost always be on high. So this should be pretty energy conservative overall, since it's only running when it's in use, and I'll probably only need to run it 5, maybe 10 minutes at a time. So I'd say this turned out pretty well. If you guys have any other ideas, feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, I really didn't see any other videos about doing this sort of thing. You'll see like, you know, inline water heater installation videos. But I wasn't seeing anything about making one yourself from scratch other than some guy in India, I think, posted one using uh, like natural gas. Which, yeah, okay, you made a water heater out of a copper coil and some natural gas, but uh, a little bit silly for uh, people who mostly use electricity. For example, I have absolutely no gas out here. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it.